This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and happy Friday. God bless you. I'm Pastor A.D., Pastor True Vine, NBC here in Houston, Texas, and I thank you so much for joining us for the pastoral moment. This is the time I get to encourage and enlighten you with the Word of God. And today, church, and today I want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button. You better know it. Hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost a thing. It's free free, free at charge. Just hit the button and become a member of this channel and share this channel. And also, if you are a current member of this channel, we thank you. We love you. And we praying for you. We bless you. Please, please continue, continue to share this channel with everybody so someone can get saved because you got to, you got to come to Christ. You got to come to Christ and surrender yourself to Christ so you can be a part of of the elect. And that's today's topic. I want to talk about the doctrine of election. The doctrine of election. Very important. The doctrine of election. So election refers broadly to the act of choosing. In the Bible, it can refer to any type of choice made by anyone. Most commonly, however, we think in terms of God's choices when we talk about election. As the Bible uses the word in regards to God's choices, it sometimes pertains to God's choice of Israel as his people, sometimes to his choice of the church as his people, and sometimes to the choice of certain individuals for salvation. Generally, the context of a particular use makes its meaning clear. So let's look at some verses, a few verses about the doctrine of election. Let's look at John 15, verse 6. John chapter 15, verse 6. You did not choose me, but I chose you, Jesus said and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give it to you so appointed appointed so that is very particular he's talking to his disciples i chose you i chose you and he cho he's talking to us also because the book of john oh yeah the book of john most of it is to us and so whenever you take theology a course of theology or any type of biblical study you're going to have a class called the book of John that you got to take. <laughs> and so and so it's very important that we learn the book of John and we notice appointed is in there. that I, I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. God has appointed you to go and bear fruit. Are you bearing fruit? Are you? Are you sharing the word of God? Are you? Are you sharing your testimony? Are you? Are you sharing the name Jesus? Are you? What are you doing? Are you sharing the word of God? Are you? What are you doing? Are you praying for people? What are you doing as a believer in Christ? Are you telling people about the goodness of Jesus Christ? Very important that you do so. And then we have one of my favorite scriptures. Oh, I love it. This is called the golden chain of salvation. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 30. The golden chain of salvation. This connects us to salvation right here. This verse, check this out. And we know that for those who love all that, for those who love the Lord, that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, and for those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, there it is, for those who he foreknew before eternity passed, before time ever came into existence, God already knew. He are, our names were already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the first born among many brothers, right? He was the firstborn. But remember, we have the second Adam, Jesus Christ. We have the second Adam. The first Adam messed up. And then we have the second Adam, Jesus Christ, to come and start it over and, and die for our sins and gave his life for us. And he didn't stay dead. He got up with all power in heaven and earth. And those whom he predestined, he also called. So there it is. And those whom he predestined, he also called. So he predestined us and he has called us. He also called and those whom he called, he also justified. There it is. Jesus justified us, right? Justified our sins. We're justified now. We're, we're set free from that. We have been found innocent. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. There it is. The process of glorification, the process of sanctification. So right now we are in the process of sanctification. Now, when we reach heaven or if we're still alive and when Jesus come back and rapture his church, he come for his church. And when we see him, we shall be made just like him. We will be glorified. And so keep that in mind. That's the golden chain of salvation. Romans 8, the 28th verse 
all the way to the end. That's the golden chain of salvation that connects us where we were predestined. We were chosen before this world was ever created. We, our names was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Not everybody, but some were chosen. Then we have Romans 9 and 11. Romans chapter 9 and 11. Though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. And we're going to see this a couple times, not because of works, but because of him who calls. Because a lot of us want to take credit about our works. Works do not get you to heaven. Works do not get you to heaven. It does not. It won't work. You are not good enough to get yourself to heaven. We are all fallen people. None of us are good. We all try, we can try to do better. We can try to better ourselves. We can try to grow, which we should grow in Christ, continue to grow. We can, we can do our best to be holy, to live holy, to strive to be holy, to st strive to be sanctified because we are sanctified because we're set apart, but strive to be better than that. Continue to go and go. However, none of us are perfect. None of us are. And so because of Jesus Christ, we are saved through him. That's a gift. Faith is a gift. And so his grace, his mercy, and through faith and by faith alone, are we saved. And then we have Ephesians chapter one, verses five, four through five. Ephesians chapter one, verses four and five. Even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, there it is, that we should be holy and blameless before him. So even as he chose us in him before the foundations of, so in him we were chosen. In Jesus Christ, we were chosen before, before the foundations of this world. So that lets you know already that Christ existed way before any time. He's God. And so a lot of people don't want to accept it, but that's who he is. That we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. Yes, we have been adopted. We have been adopted through Jesus Christ. That is good news. That's shouting news. That is news. That is news to be happy about, elated about. Oh my God, you should go crazy now about because we have been adopted through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of who? Of God's will, of his will. Yes, this is God. God sent Jesus because God already chosen. He already written down the, our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so he has chosen those who will be in his future kingdom, in Jesus' future kingdom. And that is, that's when you see the new heaven and the new earth come down and set on earth. And that's the, that's the new kingdom. That is the millennial reign. That is the new kingdom. So we have 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord. This is Paul talking to Timothy. Because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the spirit and belief in truth because God has chose you as the first fruits to be saved. Isn't that amazing? The first fruits, we're a part of the first fruit. Isn't that amazing to be saved that God has chose us? He, he chose us. He, he saw through the generations and generations and saw us and he chose us to be in his church. That is amazing, man. 1 Peter 1 and 20, he was foreknown, there it is, before the foundations of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. That is Jesus Christ. Jesus, let's put it like this. Here we go. Jesus was foreknown before the foundation of the world. Christ was foreknown before the foundations of the world. <laughs> Before Abraham was, he said, I am, <laughs> but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, but came down, down as a servant. He lowered himself to come down to save us for you and I, that we may have a right to the tree of life, that we may be uh, forgiven of our sins, that we may have eternal life. And he did it for us. So no longer our slate has been wiped clean. Whatever I've done in the past, whatever I'm doing now, all the times I mess up, I, no matter what it is, I'm not saying you have a license to sin, but the times I have messed up, God, it, my slate has been wiped clean. Your slate has been wiped clean. No matter what you've done in the past, when you are in Christ, your slate 
has been wiped clean. Your sins have been washed away. They're no more. God doesn't remember them anymore. You are perfect in his eyes. You are accounted righteous in his eyes. And so Revelation 13 and 8. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Our last one. And all who dwell on earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the lamb who was slain. Mm. So it's a little twist here, a little twister, because not only do I want to see, I want you to see, and I want us to celebrate the believers in Christ and what happens, what happens to the believers in Christ. But I want to be informative also about those who are not in Christ, about what happens after you leave this side. This is for the unbelievers, Revelation 13, 8. And, and all who dwell on earth will worship it. They will worship some type of idol. Idol. They will worship some type of um, false prophet. They will worship these things. They will worship. And everyone whose name has not been written before the foundations of the world. If your name was not written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the world was ever created, then you are destined for what? In the world, in the book of life of Lamb, who was slain. So there it is. All of those, all those who are believers in Christ that's still here, that comes to Christ during the time of tribulation period, will, they're going to be slain because they're not going to receive the mark of the beast. But those who worship the beast, those who worship the false prophet, those who worship evilness, they will be sent to hell. They will be judged with the devil and they will be sent to hell. And so it's very important that you surrender your life. You surrender your life because that's why Jesus have yet to come back. I say this a lot and I'm going to re reiterate again. The reason why Jesus have yet to come back for his church is because he's waiting on some of you that whose name was written before the foundations of this world was created in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is written to go to heaven. You're written, you have that pass to go to heaven, but you have yet to come to him. You have yet to surrender. You have yet to turn away from the world and come into the marvelous light and walk for Christ. You have yet to do that. And that's why he's waiting on some and he's waiting on you today. And I wanna give you an open invitation right now to Jesus Christ that you will receive him as your Lord and Savior. This is your time to come to Christ right now. Forget about what people got to say about you. People are going to talk about you anyway. Don't worry about that. They call you a sellout or whatever. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Who cares? They're not your friend anyway. But if you're looking for a way out, out of that life, out of the world, out of the sinful world, you're looking for a way out of the gang, if you're looking for a way out of drugs, if you're looking for a way out of whatever you're in, your abuse, whatever you're in, that's not of Christ. It's time to come to Christ and receive Christ today. And I'm telling you, your mind will be made new. Everything about you will be new. Your life will be new because God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you to surrender all, surrender totally to him. Come unto him now. And all you have to do is believe in your heart, from your heart, confess with your mouth, from your heart that Jesus is Lord and he's your savior, that he died and that he rose on the third day with all power in heaven and earth for your sins and your sins will be washed away. Repent and turn from the devil and turn to Christ. So that's what you have to do. Repent, turn from the enemy, the devil, and turn to Christ. This is your time. Please come to Christ today. Surrender your all and come to Christ. It takes a lot. It takes courage, but you, you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. I, I know you can do it. Come on, come to Christ. Come now. Don't wait too late. Come to Christ today while you still have breath in your body. And I'm telling you, you will be a great testimony to others that's going through the same thing that you're going through right now. Thank you so much. I pray that you surrendered your life to Christ. I pray that you learned a lot about the doctrine of election. Until next time, tune in Sunday for the word of God. And we love you. We love you. We love you. Hey, thank you for all the support. Hit the subscribe button. 
here at True Vine, we're praying for you. You want to know why? Because we're True Vine and we are the church of love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.